Carpet coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for our brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Expert. Come on, this is a live podcast. There's people around the world listening to this. Are you guys ready to have some fucking fun tonight? Great, right? Brian Red Band's here, everybody. How about a hand for the band, huh? Come on. Wow. Austin just does it a little bit fucking differently, doesn't it? That's the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums. The great Matt Muling on uh, guitar. And Deep Madness on the bass guitar, everybody. Fuck yeah. Uh, that is the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey uh, Band, everyone. Delicious Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Uh, how many of you like whiskey out there? Make some goddamn noise if you like peanut butter. Fuck yeah! I say mix them together. Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, it's delicious. You can mix it with shit. Tastes hey, like peanut hey, butter. Don't try it at home. Don't try to just put peanut butter in like Jack Daniels. It's fucking disgusting. It's, nah, I tried it. Also brought to you tonight, of course, by our uh, longtime sponsors through us, with us through thick and thin, uh, the Yellow Rose and the Red Rose, everyone. Oh, yeah. The best strip clubs in the world here in Austin, Texas. Shout out to Blue North or Vodka Seltzer, available here for sale tonight. Uh, very, very good stuff. And uh, CM Smokehouse, our favorite... Favorite barbecue in town. Great Yoni leads us there. The best barbecue show. We got handmade joke books made by the great Bones Eye. This guy used to fucking... So these are real Texas leather right here. Give them out to comedians. He's a uh, taxidermist. The guy that makes these. Really fucking... He stuffs animals. Real Texas shit. You guys know what it is. Before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey y'all, the holiday season is here, and with it come the yearly questions of what do I wear to non-ugly sweater parties, and how do I maximize my time savoring holiday moments and minimize my time shopping for gifts? Fear not, weary holiday wanderer. Mac Weldon has all the answers. Whether it's an office party, a party with family or friends, or just a holiday party of you, your couch, and a game on TV, Mac Weldon has all the essentials to keep you stylish and comfortable throughout the season. And their innovative daily wear system has taken the hard work out of outfit planning with pieces designed to work together for any occasion, saving you time and sparing you any holiday stress. And we're talking about top notch tops, best selling bottoms, like me, and underwear and accessories that will please even the scroogiest guys on your list. With Mack Weldon, your holiday heavy lifting will be complete within minutes. I got a lot of their stuff. I love it. I know you're into it too, Red Band. Heck yeah. Mack Weldon's ace sweatshirts and sweatpants are some of the most comfortable clothes I've ever worn. Definitely would make some amazing gifts. And as somebody that hates, you know, going shopping and stuff, you could just go online and order it all together at once. As something of a stickler when it comes to comfortable sweatpants and sweatshirts, I was initially skeptical, but when I heard the hype around Mack Weldon's Ace Collection, I was on board. I'm not going to lie, I'm not a fan of the cold. Feeling like a walking popsicle just doesn't suit me. But with Mack Weldon's Warm Kit Collection, that features shirts, vests, pajama pants, and more, my chilly winter days are behind me. Using innovative technology that uses your own body heat to keep you at the perfect temperature. These products from Mack Weldon have me saying something I never thought I would. I'm ready for the cold. Ooh, what a concept. One gift that holds many gifts inside. And no one is doing better gift sets this holiday season than Mack Weldon. With limited edition color drops and a bevy of new releases, their holiday gift sets are the perfect present for any guy on your list. So... For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash Tony and enter promo code Tony. That's MacWeldon.com slash Tony. Promo code Tony for 20% off. M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N. Mac Weldon. Get it right this holiday season. You guys ready to start tonight's episode or what, huh? All right. Look. 
Sometimes we have two comedian guests on the show. Sometimes we've even, in the past, we've had three. You know what? You know what this chaos is. Tonight, I like this. Fucking one guest, Texas gentleman, literally one of the greatest comedians of all time. You know him. You love him from everything. The Blue Collar Comedy Tour, everything. It's the great and powerful Ron White, everyone. Wow. Oh, shit. One of the best to ever do it. Austin Zone. Ron White. This is the man that convinced me to move to Texas in November of the year 2020. And here we are. <laughs> he was selling me on it a year ago today. And uh, here we are, almost a one-year anniversary of me living here with my pal, the great Ron White, is here, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. On top it of has been a year, hasn't it? That's yeah. very cool. That's Crazy, very cool. right? We had all taken a long break from stand-up. The pandemic shut us all down, and I came in town to do a show, and I could not... It was right here at Vulcan Gas Company, that one-night stand-up show that I did. And you and Joe Rogan opened for me that night, and it was so fucking cool. And you hadn't done stand-up in eight months, and he hadn't done stand-up since moving to Austin. And uh, It was fucking awkward, man. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. People falling over the balconies. It was chaos. And it happened here at Vulcan, where I couldn't believe that a dirty little electronic dance club could ever become a comedy fucking hub. But here we are. Everything's just normal now. Ron, we're going to have fun. You guys all know what it is. A bunch of people signed up for the chance to do 60 seconds uninterrupted on this stage. You guys know their time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. That's a big trouble. That's what that sounds like when that happens. And yeah, and then we talk to them afterwards about their set and their life and whatever else might be interesting about them. Anything can happen. A lot of wild people sign up for this show. It's a fucking crazy... Are you guys ready to start this thing or what? Great. Let's do it. But before I go to that bucket, what do you guys think? Should we start with a regular here tonight, huh? Someone you guys know and love already. Every single week, there's a couple guys that perform a brand new minute, which is very, very, very hard to do. A lot of, if your favorite comedian writes a new minute every week, that's basically an hour special a fucking year. Not an easy thing to do. These guys are always in high-pressure situations here, and they always follow through. This guy was made a regular here in Texas, kicking off tonight's show. This is a brand new minute by the one and only Hans Kim, everyone. Yeah. Thank you guys. So the Travis Scott concert happened. And a bunch of people got trapped at a trap concert. Um, if only they could have seen that coming. Uh, it was a very terrible tragedy, but uh, they, they also set a world record for the most Supreme shirts ironed at the same time. So. It's the only tragedy you can commemorate with a face tattoo, so. <laughs> I'm single. Um, I, uh, it's hard to online date because you need to have like a Bumble, a Tinder, a Hinge. It's like I have to start a small PR firm just to get laid nowadays. It's like, here's my press packet. It won't, someone touch my dick already. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Hans Kemp. With exactly one minute of stand-up comedy, doing it every week, out here. Love the Travis Scott shit. Love the dating stuff. How you doing, Hans? I'm doing amazing. <laughs> Why? So you seem extra happy tonight. <laughs> um, the drugs help. Uh, what drugs are you on? I'm you can never tell when Asians are on drugs. <laughs> They're very good. They have the, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't, I, don't know. I don't know if these are stereotypes I'm saying up here. I don't want to get in trouble, but... Uh. We have the perfect eyes for drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's, if I eat too many mushrooms, you are what I look like. <laughs> 
I love it. So what drugs are you on right now? Just a tad bit of, of uh, marijuana, but I'm coming off of acid from a little skank fest action this weekend. <laughs> I love it. Skankfest was a wild success, if anybody's wondering. We are just all getting back from a four-day fucking insane... Uh, we did a bunch of Kill Tony tapings. What else did you do for fun? What else did you love about Skankfest? I went to Joel Osteen's church. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Did yeah. you really? It was on the way to Rage and Cajun, and we were like, hey, look at this, that thing over there. So what happened? What was that like? Well, luckily their doors were open because there wasn't a hurricane in town. <laughs> I literally don't know this reference that just got that big of a laugh, and I'm super confused. How did how this not... I didn't get this in my daily reports of uh, what to make jokes about. Joel Osteen uh, closed his doors when yeah, there was a hurricane? Yeah, he, he didn't want anyone in there to, you know, ruin the place. <laughs> he said that they had just uh, cleaned the carpets. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he fucking said, right? He said, yeah. no, he just cleaned yeah. the carpets. All those people are floating around outside. <laughs> and uh, he ran them off. And then this guy that owns a big mattress store let them all come in. And uh, they slept at his place. Now he can't sell enough back of mattresses, and this guy's still the biggest goddamn thing in Jesus. Wow. And, uh, that is absolutely amazing. Incredible. So, Hans, you're talking about being single up there during your set. Is that true again? You are single, is that correct? Yes, now, I'm very single. And I hope you don't mind that I divulge the information that I'm about to put out there. But uh, <laughs> Hans, in the you know, amazing work that he's done in the few short months that he's been here, has climbed up to the position of opening a lot of these Joe Rogan shows that happen uh, here in town and here at Vulcan, in fact. And that means, you know, he's going up before, you know, me or, Shane, you know, like last week, Shane Gillis, Ari Shafir, Mark Norman, all these people were in town. Ron's on a lot of those shows, and Hans goes up first. Anyway, last week, one of these shows happened, and Hans decided to match with someone on Tinder and invite them on their first ever date <laughs> to I was there. I was there. literally that green room with me, Ron White, and <laughs> Joe Rogan. It's not, if you're wondering, you might be thinking, wow, the comedian's that big. I bet the green room is huge. And it simply is not. There's about enough room for those people that I just named <laughs> in that green room. And uh, one of them is just this. How would you describe her, Hans? <laughs> She's a very beautiful, artistic... Is she uh, here right now? Yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. <laughs> I fucking knew it. <laughs> She's man. got big, beautiful eyes. Oh, yeah. that, that's one way of putting it. Especially when they're looking opposite directions from one another. No, I'm kidding. She's not. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm just, I'm making jokes. You're not, you don't look like that. But you do contrast each other well when it comes to uh, your eyes. I wouldn't yeah. describe yours as, uh... hey, look at that. Wow, that's pretty good. So how did that date end up going for you? You literally match with a girl on Tinder. She takes a chance, right? I mean, uh -huh. she, you, know, you have pictures of you up there, so she's probably just looking for like a hot meal or something like that. <laughs> you know? And then next thing you know, she's in a green room with some of the great comedians of the world. Uh, I'm imagining you must have gotten laid that night. Am I correct? Nope. Oh, fuck. Uh, really? <laughs> You fumbled the bumble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really fucked it up. Um, how, did you know. this, how does this happen? How do you not close after that type of first impression with a girl? I think I'm just really respectful, you know? I just, <laughs> I just do whatever the lady wants, and, you know, I'm just happy to, you know, have her in my van. <laughs> Now, when she's in your van, some of you might not know, Hans lives in his van. There's like a mattress in the back, right? Yes. And uh, so wh what happens? You take her back to your van. Are you guys like sitting, laying? Like how does that even go? 
Ooh, um, do you guys sit in the, you guys pretend like the front and passenger seats like the living room and that's the bedroom <laughs> back there <laughs> yeah you just want to sit and talk for a little bit see if we uh, end up having to <laughs> fall backwards into the bedroom it's the, the bathroom and the kitchen are the same room um I, uh, I think that we just went in the back. They're um, both outside of the van, I do believe. <laughs> that room. All right. And then she fell asleep, I think. Um, and then I, uh, I don't really remember. I don't really remember. Uh, but usually I've, she's been in my van twice now, and we just sort of cuddle and kiss. Ooh, it's getting van wilder and wilder. <laughs> twice. Look out, everybody. I love it. So, uh, all right. Well, Hans, what do you think, Red Band? <sighs> <laughs> Why have you not been wearing your glasses lately? Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I don't like the, th- like, the glasses are kind of like a thing on my face, and I like... Do you think it's magnifying how fucked up you are, and you think we think you're less fucked up because you don't have your glasses on? <laughs> I don't know why I asked you uh, about your opinion on this. I don't know what made me do it. The second I did it, I'm like, why did I do that? Now I'm like, really, like, why did I do that? Hans, you're amazing. You did it again. Another brand new minute. I love everything. I'd reword the trap thing. I think for the first time ever, I'm going to give you a note here because I love the joke so much. I think you should hide that trap music thing a little bit better. It should come, like, at the end. Started off as a rap concert, ended up a trap concert or something like that. You know, okay. hide that big. Your premise is so good that you're like teeing it off a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. You Thank do you. you. You're a killer. Hans Kim, everybody. Thank you. Hey, look at this. Look what we found. A bo- bottle of delicious number one tequila. For those of you that don't know, it's the best fucking tequila in the world. The tequila that I drink when I'm at home drinking tequila you should too it's available at all your favorite uh retail stores and whatnot liquor outlets and founded by uh, the great ron white i don't know if i mentioned that our guest tonight number one tequila it's his tequila all right let's get a name out of this bucket you guys ready to really start the wild shit that could happen here we've had a lot of a lot of fun lately. Let's see what happens here. Kicking off tonight's bucket. Your first uninterrupted 60 seconds by we have no idea who. Goes by the name of Clemente Villegas, everybody. That's a name. Clemente Villegas. One more time for Clemente, everybody. Come on. I feel like dating now is harder than it's ever been, you know, because women want a guy who will take their breath away, and I'm tired of choking these hoes. It's really, it's too much, like too much true crime, ladies. Like you really, you got to choke a bitch just to get a second date, you know? People are like, why'd y'all stop talking? She chewed through the duct tape, you know? No, I had a girl ask me to tease her with a knife in bed. Terrifying, right? Like, I can't have a knife out while my dick's also out, you know? I might fall and recircumcise myself. But then I can't get into Jewish heaven. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, Jewish heaven, it's all like Christian heaven, except in Jewish heaven, there's no foreskin and Jesus isn't allowed. And there's this weird entry fee. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, if you guys aren't familiar with Christian heaven, it's all like Muslim heaven, except in Muslim heaven, there's just more explosions. Um, <laughs> That's a joke. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Muslims don't go to heaven. Um, okay. Thank you very much. It's a minute from Clemente Villegas. Really saving it there at the end with the Muslims don't go to heaven line. Really pulling it all together. How you doing, Clemente? Have you been on the show before? Yeah, I've been on once. Okay. What happened that time? What, did we, what happened with you? Um, what, what was the highlights of your interview part? What did we find out about you? Uh, my interview uh, kind of sucked. I'm from Amarillo, so uh-huh. Ron's from West Texas. That's pretty okay. cool. Um, also, I think you're from Amarillo, right? All yeah. right. All right, Cap- all right, fucking Carmen San Diego. Oh, okay. Enough <laughs> about where everybody's from. Uh, my bad. My bad. What else about you? What did we find out other um, than the uh, location that you were born <laughs> um, well, I, I do s- believe Tony's from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, red band from Columbus. <laughs> Not oh. far from one another, just like all of us. 
I mentioned uh, having a brain tumor. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, I mentioned that. There you that. go. Lots uh, of people from Amarillo. Not a lot of people yeah, with brain tumors um, up here. My, my girlfriend's black. That's also. Oh, wow. I think. So. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It was, was, was that the tumor? <laughs> Wait, why did that get that reaction? Look, look, look. Let me, let me backtrack here. I never explain a joke, but I don't know if you guys saw. What's the movie with Gabriel, guys? What's that called? What's that movie? Malignant. Yeah, Malignant. How many of you have seen Malignant on uh, <laughs> a lot of hand raisers on that one? Nobody wants to, like, make noise to be. Anyway, Netflix. But, all right. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to explain it. It's a movie about a tumor that comes to life, and it's black. So fuck you really? guys. <laughs> that sounds like an fuck awesome Fuck you guys movie. for groaning at my thing. That was a rep. I know I didn't know the Joel Osteen church thing. <laughs> But trust me, I know my references. That's a real movie? <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, my God. You have awesome. to watch it. It's horrible, and but it's actually, now that I've given away the entire twist, it would be the worst movie of Wait, all time. Does, does he sound <laughs> black? <laughs> no. I'm not saying anything else. No, the tumor doesn't sound black. Uh, that would have been better. That's good. No, it doesn't sound black. <laughs> All right, Clemente, what do you do for work? I uh, work at a bank. Oh, what do you do at the bank? I just, like, open up accounts. It's actually, like, a new bank, so I kind of just, like, sit there and play <laughs> games on the computer. All really, right, all so. right. Play games on the computer. Nobody walks in. Damn. What's your love life like, Clemente? Oh, well, I'm in a two-year relationship. Oh, that's right. You have a black yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Where'd you yeah. meet her at? Uh, back in my hometown. We moved here together. Amarillo, Texas, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's rare. That's like a Pikachu or something, yeah, right? Yeah, that's I true. Know, that is true. A lot gotta, of songs about Amarillo. None of about finding your black one. girlfriend there. That's for sure. Uh, I love it. So you're in Amarillo. You're at a bar, restaurant, work together. Oh, interesting story. Um, there you go. Good we interview. met through... Uh, she actually uh, hooked up with my roommate on a Tinder date, and then we like met up like five years later. It's not that interesting now that I say it out loud. Um, five years later? Mutual friends. Did you remember her from five years before? Yeah. Oh, okay. They brought you along on their Tinder date? No, she just like showed up at our apartment. It was not less of a date, more of like a, you know. Was your friend actually banging her or were they just like, were they in the Hans Kim situation? I, li I like to believe they just cuddled. Um... Oh, okay. <laughs> what? Is there anything... Have you been with white women before, right? Yeah. Is there anything different that you notice having sex with a black woman that's different than a white woman? Well, um, most white women like just don't have ass. Um, yeah, that's more... Okay. That's more of like a... That's more of like a physical <laughs> uh, thing. I'm talking about like in the bedroom, in the act of making love. Is there something different you notice that... About a black woman than a white woman. Um, I guess this is a really loaded question, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Your attorney, Ron White, has saved uh, you on this uh, one. Uh, uh, you don't have to answer that. You really don't. <laughs> <laughs> Ron White. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, Judge, the jury, and the executioner, the great Ron White. Clemente, I love it. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, four years. Four years. Wow, yes. look at that. All right. Where, where do you do stand-up besides here? Do you go to, is this the only thing you do? Is it, or do you go to a comedy clubs and do open mic nights? Or? Oh, yeah, just like every night a week. Like There's Creek and Cave and several other okay. okay. places. I know I've seen you out there a little bit. Oh, cool. The, uh, I, you know what? I... Uh, I really think that you got to cut some of this edge off because it, it just doesn't come off as real. You don't seem like that mean a guy. Mm -hmm. So either learn how to act meaner when you get up here, uh, come off as holy as and then sell this st darker stuff, or do – it just doesn't sound like you're being true to your nature to me. You know, I don't okay. know if that's true or not, but it, it seems like oh. you're not that person and you're trying to be that person on stage, and I don't – you know. I'm, I think it'd be more interesting if you were just who you are. Oh, uh, thank you. Honest advice. Good I advice. was going to say, you seem like a very, very, like, nice, well-mannered guy. Am I, are we right in this assumption, or are you just appearing that way? No, I'm, I'm pretty nice. You're, yeah. I'm nice I'm a nice What's, guy. like, a wild thing about you? Is there anything wild or mean or anything, like, sort of, like, bad boy about you? 
Um, He's a banker with a fucking tumor, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, bad boy. I... No, I mean, I, I do acid sometimes. Is that bad? No, even no. Hans Kim <laughs> does that. Jesus. That's nothing. What do you do when you're on acid? I like to, like, go to, like, park, parks and, like, see nature. Just, like, hang out. Oh, wow. all sure. right. Yeah. Fucking real fucking, uh... I went to uh, a, a Gabby concert Petito last over <laughs> here. <laughs> Concerts? Yeah. What, what's your favorite concert you've ever been to? I just went to uh, Tame Impala. They're like a psychedelic rock band. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice. All right. Look at you. This is these fucking bank tellers out there tripping their balls <laughs> off at fucking concerts. Good to know you're counting the money. <laughs> yeah. We you got ever, machines for that. You ever so think okay. about, you ever, you, I mean, I can't, I, I can't imagine working at a bank because I think that my mind would always be about how do I sneak a fucking bag of this money out of here? Right? Isn't it crazy being surrounded by money and, you know, you probably make a decent wage, but I mean, you're mm-hmm. not what you could make if you just left with the money. Yeah, but I mean, they, they'll find me, you know? Yeah, I'm not. Is it ever tempting though? It seems like it would be constant temptations. Yeah, I mean, I've thought about it, but, you know. But have you I'd like to object right here. You don't have to answer that question. No, no. <laughs> you have a good attorney, sir. Continue, continue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was our first uh, bucket pool, Clemente Villegas, everybody. We're going back to this bucket. Hey. Clemente, here you go. Have a joke book, buddy. I like your style. It's a good guy. Bonsai. The great Bonsai. Follow him on Instagram. B-O-N-E-Z-E-Y-E. Okay. Wordna. Or Wordina, perhaps? Wordna? W-E-R-D-N-A? Wordna. That's an interesting one. Here we go. Oh, here he comes, everybody. Make some noise for Wordna, everyone. Here we go. Everybody, uh, so I recently started watching uh, Harry Potter, and <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. And I started thinking, why isn't this a religion? It has everything the basics, right? Cult following, plenty of literature, it's fake as fuck. Um, <laughs> now, I'm not saying that everything about religion is bad because. I mean, it teaches women to keep their purity, practice anal sex, and uh, that makes a good wife, right? But at the same time, religion also uh, tells that young boys that they're going to get involuntary anal sex, and that leads to them believing in shit like QAnon, and (laughs) that kind of sucks, you know? Um, (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not saying that QAnon is like, you know, they're not all molested or anything, but they're pretty retarded. As well. Jesus Christ. All right, word now, everybody. This is wild. Look at this guy. I love it. <laughs> or girl. I'm not sure what the fuck this is exactly. This looks like if someone put Rosie O'Donnell in the microwave. <laughs> Wordna, am I saying that right? Is that your name, Wordna? No, my name is uh, Andrew, actually. Andrew. Wordna is backwards. So, oh, like, oh okay. wow, that's that's so gay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> With an H. I love it. Uh, Wordna, welcome, welcome. How long you been doing stand up? Is that your uh, first time right there? Time. Wow, his <laughs> first time, everybody. Thank you. Congratulations. And how old are you? I'm uh, 31. I just turned 31 in uh, 31. Halloween. It's something you've always wanted to do or thought about? No, I just wanted to challenge myself and see what it's all about. So I was Okay. Like, how does it feel up. now that you've done it? Uh, feels great, I guess. I don't know. You don't know? It feels great you don't know? I remember the first time I did stand-up, and I was scared as fuck. I'm so if that was really the first time you ever walked on stage, yeah, it was bad. Yes, it was. But... 
<laughs> the best thing about it is that I will have already forgotten it in 20 fucking minutes because I'm coming on to an edible. So... <laughs> But it takes guts to get up there and do it. And you stare at them down and you try to keep your pace. You know, know the, know the material a little bit better. And uh, I think that the next time you do this, you'll be a little better. And, uh, and, and that uh, might end up being something really fun for you. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. you I love it. What have you been doing with your life up until this point? What do you do for work? Uh, for work, I actually work for Costco. I'm an inventory auditor. <laughs> oh, a what? An inventory checker guy? Yeah, inventory auditor. You're the guy that checks the receipts on the way out? No, I work at the... Uh, <laughs> not that one. I work at the uh, distribution center, so it's like all the shit that we get for returns. And Are you then... on forklifts a lot? No, not that often. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Wow. All right. What else? What do you do for fun? You seem like you have some hobbies. Uh, for fun, I just hang out with my girlfriend, just chill, hobbies, some graffiti, some bike riding. That's it. Graffiti and bike riding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez Louise. <laughs> you know, Costco backwards is Costco. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty fucking cool, though. Yeah. It's not. It's not at all. <laughs> it's not at all that. It's not know. cool, and it's not true, and it didn't, <laughs> it's not exactly where that should have been placed. It's actually in not the talks true. about Costco. everybody in here is going C O S C O S T. No, oh. <laughs> that bullshit. Yeah, actually, yeah. So you have a girlfriend. Tell yes. us about this. Met her at Costco. No, met her in high school. Okay. Yeah. Wow, you've been together for a while, huh? Long time, actually. Sixteen what? years to today. Sixteen actually. years. That's yeah. incredible. That's wow. more than half your life. Yeah, actually. Wow. Have you ever been with another girl other than this no. girl? My goodness, that's incredible. Boy, you want to you want to try one tonight? <laughs> uh, while you're doing all these things for the first time, you ever think about the ultimate? No, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. You think she's ever been with anybody else? Yes. I don't know, actually, but that's... <laughs> well, what is she doing right now? Uh, chilling at the bar, actually. <laughs> chilling at the bar with who? Uh, <laughs> Did you hear? We actually... That's the sound of them... Ha who she's hanging out with right now. I believe that's one of the Migos, my friend. Uh, no, I love it. What does she do? Uh, she makes press on nails. Press. So she has her own business. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> people really, that, uh, according to a lot of people, that's the funniest part of your entire act. Is that, <laughs> all right, all right, okay, that's enough. Let's use press on nails music, everybody. Uh, Never get to yeah. use it. Wordna. All right, Wordna, well, it's your first time doing this. What else have you done that you've uh, been experimenting with? Seems like you're knocking things off of a bucket list. Are there other things in life you're looking forward to doing? For the first time? Uh, well, I actually just flew to Austin for the first time. So. You flew to, this was your first time on an airplane? Yes. Actually. Wow. wow. 31 crazy. years old. Yeah, Holy wow. shit. Where the fuck are you from? I'm from Riverside, California. Riverside, California. Hell yeah. A lot of West Coast out here. Represent. <laughs> I'm a Texan now, so you guys can all go <laughs> fuck yourselves. Uh, <laughs> But there was a time for me in California. Riverside, for those of you that don't know, is the uh, top right corner of the Grand Theft Auto map. Uh, <laughs> pure white trash, meth heads everywhere, people on ATVs getting DUIs and fucking... So it's real trash sure. up there. Yeah, a little bit. Incredible. What's like one of the white trashiest things you've ever seen? You spent you've spent your whole life there, is that right? No, actually no. Well, oh, in, well in very few people Empire, moved yes. to Riverside, so Yeah. I just assume. White trashiest thing? Uh, I don't know actually. I can't really I mean, think this of is anything. the type of place where you'll see like uh someone do a drive by on a can of Mountain Dew. Like it's like <laughs> a it's like a special kind of trash. <laughs> All right. Uh all right, Wordna. I don't know what else to do with you, dude. You uh, you got your first time ever on stage here tonight. You're going to get a little joke book for the All whole right, thing cool. from the great bones eye. Take that back with you. On. What airline did you fly? Spirit? American. American. Uh, the only airline worse than Spirit. I everybody. hate fucking you American. Go. You guys ready for your next bucket pool? Yeah. Let's see what happens here. I have a, go I have a good feeling about this. 
Make some noise for Cousin Berto. Cousin Berto. That's a cool name. It's probably his maiden name. You guys having fun out here, huh? What's going on out there, Austin, Texas? You guys with us tonight? Here he is. Cousin Berto. Whoa, whoa. This is badass, dude. I am Cousin Berto, and I just wanted to let you guys know that... Um, can I get personal with you guys? Can I be personal? All right. I recently just found out that choking during sex is a turn on for me. <laughs> it's a turn on for me, dude. I don't know why, but you know, it's a quick it's a turn on for me. You know, my throat is sore, but I think I'll get <laughs> I think I'll be fine. No, listen. Uh <laughs> I just got to <laughs> laugh at my own shit. <laughs> I laugh at my own shit. I know, I know. But uh, uh, I just um, I just got a new job actually. Um, they call it's with the staffing agency, so they call me right, and they're like, "Hey, you have we have a new job and blah blah blah." I'm like, "Okay, what is it?" And you know, and as a gay male, this was my dream job ever since I was a little girl. And so she's like, <laughs> and she she's like, um, you know, well you're gonna be polishing pipes. I'm like, "Holy shit, <laughs> polishing pipes, dude!" I'm like, "Okay, well what time do I need to be there?" Seven, I'll be there at 6.30, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, ma- it's overtime mandatory. <laughs> and she's like, well, how many years do uh, you, you have any experience doing this? I'm like, well, I'm 47. <laughs> I'm 47, I have 32 years Cousin experience. Berto, okay, Cousin Berto, Cousin Berto, thank time, you. time, everybody. Cousin, welcome to the show. I'm going to interview you now. You can keep that microphone. That's right. Welcome. That's right. This is your first time on. I'd remember you. I've yes. never seen you before. No. You're like a gayer Mario Cantone. <laughs> <laughs> An incredibly straight-looking gay man, this is. Very rarely. I mean, you are just... A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Look at you. Crazy. It's funny that your first name's Cousin, because I bet your family doesn't talk to you. <laughs> I love it. Keep it up. I keep them coming. Am I right, Cousin? What's going on here? How, is your, how long have you been doing stand-up? For about six years now. Six years. Yes, Where sir. at? I, I am, I'm from Austin, born and raised here, so I started comedy here. Then I moved to San Antonio. So I live in San Antonio now, which is just an hour away. Oh, what, yeah. what clubs around here? Uh, well, I, I'm an open micer still, so I do a lot of open mics and stuff. Right. Um, right. Every day you do I'm open mics, open. gyms, bobs. You do it all. <laughs> I do everything. And <laughs> you can find me on 35 in Runberg at the Coochie Corner. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The, the coochie corner? What's, what's, what's the coochie corner? That's where corner? the coochie corner is. 35 and run. Why do they call it the know. coochie corner? Just where you buy coochie at. <laughs> you look like literally, you, I, think, I think you are literally the last guy I think that would ever buy coochie. <laughs> are they selling butthole at the back door? I'm confused. Why, you'd be at coochie corner. I have you more on Hershey Whoa. Highway. Whoa. Well, my uh, my sister works there. I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so ridiculous. laughs> what the I'm fuck was kidding. that shit, dude? <laughs> this, uh, yeah. I dropped her off before the show, all right? Cousin Berto, you are a <laughs> wild man. You look like you work at Homo Depot. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, the other day, the other day you called. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. You you were looking for a female comic, but you came across my name. I'm like, damn, I could tell him I identify as a woman. That is true. <laughs> I, I <believe laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just so, uh, kidding. when did you uh, have you? Uh, uh, what's your love life like? Nothing. Uh, it's nothing. <laughs> but you are you're a single. We would say gay man, right? Right. And uh, how, are you on any of the dating sites or anything like that? I just want to know if like Hans really. is going to bring you into the green room next week or something like that. <laughs> All right, cousin, that is literally the gayest thing we've ever seen before. <laughs> Somehow that little thing that you do with your tongue is gayer than like a penis and a butt. Like it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> so gay. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Uh, did I ask you what you do for work already? What I do for work, I don't. I am currently unemployed. Really? How do you survive? I um, I say people. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I'm actually in the process of looking, but uh, I uh, I'm saving people's lives right now. 
by donating plasma. So that's getting me. Back. Oh my god! Oh, shit. I used to You're do that donating in your plasma? No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! People are being injected with plasma. And I'm totally kinda... kidding, but right now I'm working with the t- uh, with the um, with the staffing agency, so they're looking for a job. I just stopped last week because my assignment ended. With the staffing agency, when your assignment ends, you have to wait for another assignment. Ooh. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But, yeah. Wow. That was a lot of information. But real funny. Yeah. Real funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, real funny. That was incredible. You were, you, were on, you were on top for a while. Now you're on bottom already. Oh. Cousin, uh, no, I I've always been on bottom since I was a little girl. <laughs> I bet. When's the first time you... Yeah, we get it. 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 When's the first yeah. time you uh, you had sex? When I How, had When did sex. you lose your virginity? How old are you? I was probably about 16. 16. When 16. this was with a boy? Yes. Okay. Yes. And where were you guys like hiding? You come from a real strong, tough right. Mexican family? Brown Rock, Texas. Brown Rock? Oh, okay. Brown Rock, not Brown Rock. I didn't. So, I didn't, yeah. I'm like, wow, had... that's even a gay sounding city. That's incredible. Well, I... I'm from Brown Hole, Texas, Tony. I uh, love where I'm from. It's a real shithole. <laughs> All right, Red Band. That's enough fart noises. Jesus. Uh, but, uh, yeah, from Round, Round Rock is where I went to high school, but. Round yeah. Rock, okay. Yeah, so you're out there. Rock. What happens? You, like, on lunch break at school? Like, what goes on? What, how do you end up with this boy? Where does this happen at? Wait, during soccer, soccer practice? practice? <laughs> why, why would that be a secret? <laughs> <laughs> because oh. it was at school. <laughs> All right, so you guys are at soccer practice. Is this a true story? I want I want the I want the real you want truth. The real truth. Yeah. It was oh, I was 16 and it was a friend from <laughs> He really wasn't. No, dude. No, no, no I'm listening to you. Go it ahead. It was a, uh, a friend from school but uh, at his house. At his house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's a yeah. that's got to be a fun thing about being gay. Is like yeah. the parents well, will let you go to the bedroom and close the door behind you. You know what I mean? Cuz it's like they're good. They're just being buddies in there. Yeah. Well, we're working on a project, a science project. Just fucking. We're working on a science project. I bet you were. Hell yeah. <laughs> we were trying I've been to listening. see. I've been listening. They've been working really hard on that science project. If the, Putting if a lot the, of elbow grease into well, it. We're trying to see if the volcano would erupt correctly. I so bet. <laughs> Absolutely. You little fucking dirt ball, you. I love it. No, Cousin, what do you like to do for fun? You seem like you have hobbies. You go to darts or something like that. My my soul, uh, everything that I do is actually comedy. So right. I, I don't really have time to. Other do than stand else. up, there must be something that, where you take your mind off of even this, and I really, you do. know, you go camping or anything like that. I mean, I like to go hiking and stuff, and I like to go to the parks and stuff. And okay, what do you do when you go to the park? You just watch the children at the playground, or <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking. No, I like to, um, I like to, uh, what I like to get high and walk. I love get it. Get high and walk. Okay. It's fun, dude. In nature's nature's nice, so it's fun. It is. It is. Yeah. Nature's nice. This is something we all can agree on. <laughs> all right, cousin. You got up. You're very, very interesting, man. Very charismatic. Very <laughs> likable. You, thank you. Thank you. Keep writing, man. Keep performing. Keep putting yourself in position to get seen out there. There's a yes, lot of sir. people that'll have a gay opener out on the road with them. I would never do that, but I mean... <laughs> Well, I, I actually, um, you know, for a while I didn't talk about being gay on stage. I kind of held it back for a while. But, but recently I started talking about it, and ever since I've been talking about it, like, I've been able to, um, to come out of a shell, I guess. I think you should ta- talk less about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's okay to talk about it, yeah. but if it's everything, there's so more to you. Than, uh, than your sexuality. I think there's a lot of things to explore that you don't have to hit that note every fucking time right. with every yes, question. Sir. And I realize that's where you were kind of being led in panel, but uh, just remember that there's other stuff too. And it's, and, but yeah, that's true to your nature, so that's fucking great, whatever that nature is, right? So, but there's more to you than that, so just, right. don't, just get off that note a little bit. Yes, that's sir. what I'd do if I were you. There he goes. Advice Thank from you. one of the best to ever do Thank the you. damn thing. Ron White. Cousin Berto. You know what? I, cousin, come here. I liked you so much. I'm going to give you a big joke book. There he goes. Six years at the game. Bottom bonus. 
nobody loves the feeling of leathery skin more than Cousin Berto, so. You know what? Let's do something fun up here. Uh, exactly one month ago, four weeks ago, we had two guys uh, that got pulled out of this bucket that were, uh, just so happened, they were both completely morbidly obese. And I, we, said, we thought it was so funny that they got pulled out like basically back to back on this show. I had them both on the stage at one time just to stand next to each other. And then I decided, let's do something fun. Let's go one month, have a weight loss challenge, and see who can lose the most weight in four weeks. Are you guys ready for the final weigh-in right here, right now? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sam Hunter and Trey Pack, everyone. These guys looking to fill the shoes of Tom Segura and Bert Kreischer as the new big men in comedy. A couple big fucking boys up here. Look at you guys. This is what I like. Just a couple, couple of the last <laughs> firefighters you want to see. A full half acre up. of man right there. Right there, <laughs> a half acre. Come on. Uh, you guys are fucking big as hell. Now, Sam Hunter. Wow, look at those results. It is incredible what we've been able to do in just a month. You should have seen them a month ago. Uh, Woohoo! So, Sam Hunter, you weighed in originally four weeks ago at 335 pounds. Is that correct? Yes, it's All correct. Right. And how do you think it's gone for you this past month? It's gone well. Uh, I, feel I feel like shit right now, actually. I'm like dehydrated. I'm ready to like suck a dick for some water right now. I swear to God. Oh wow! You I took... was praying to Christ we would do this at the top of the show because I may pass away. But wow, well, that's I, feel like... I love that you think of all the things you would die from. Dehydration yeah. would yes. be at the top of that. One hundred percent. No, you're more likely to have that random heart attack that you're going to have any day now now than just any other time. That's not true. That's you not son nice, of a Tony. Bitch. You son of so you've stopped drinking water. Did you did you try to eat less food over the past four weeks? <laughs> Tony, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yes. I haven't had water in three weeks, but I had four <laughs> cheeseburgers ten yes. minutes ago. Uh, doing this new, it's a new it's a new diet, food only. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's nice. So what have you been doing the past month to uh, cut weight for this? Uh, I've been eating one meal a day, around 1,700 calories, nothing but chicken breast, eggs, kale, blueberries, pineapple, like two gallons of water wow. a day. Wow. This is hard gym. work. Now, now, just as fast as you were doing that, tell us what types of things you were eating and drinking before that, the month oh, before that, for dude, example. When that when the episode dropped when we first weighed in, I was horrified at how I looked because yeah. I just moved down here, and that was three weeks of like – Hotels on the road, nothing but like face fucking Whataburger, and like going on like six day benders. Like I was fucked up, dude. So you could you could admit that me putting some pressure on you and you randomly getting selected next to Trey Pack on an episode has helped your health the past month. Yes. Okay. Uh, just wanted the world to hear that real quick. Uh, just out here helping people. You fucking f remember how gay you guys were in May? You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway. Just a good person. So, Sam, you weighed in at 335. We also said that whoever loses the most amount of pounds gets from courtesy of Kill Tony and uh, Yellow Rose, Red Rose, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey gets $10 for each pound that they lose. So that's very exciting. Nice. There's something to hear. Anyway, weigh in with the microphone in your hand. Let's weigh in and uh We got Yoni see. up here. The here he is. There's the scale. This is the... Put your hands together for the scale man, everybody. It's a, this is Johnny Depp, everyone. Remember Johnny Depp from the movies? That's what he looks like now. You shouldn't make him hold the microphone. That's a pound, dude. He, no, don't make him. He's trying to get out of $10. Oh, wait. Is yeah. he taking his shirt off? Now, let me no. know. Oh, wow. These guys are going for it. Oh, shit. He's stripped down to his bathing suit. Let's see. 335. Yoni, what do you got over there? 363. 363. All right, All right everybody. It appears as though he has gained almost 30 pounds since. Uh, there's no way. There's no way. That's what it says. That's exactly what it says. There's no way. What? Give this man a fucking microphone. Dude, there's no way. Wait. You, you do know no. that muscles weigh more than fat, so you might have been like gaining muscle no. this whole time. Oh, thank you, Doctor Redband, for that for that bold prediction. Maybe he gained muscle. 
No. There is not a chance. <laughs> Yoni, do you think something might be wrong? <laughs> There's not a fucking chance in hell I gained 30 pounds, dude. There is not a fucking chance in hell, dude. No way. Yo, I was going to the gym like a motherfucker, Wait. dude. Like what? an animal. Yo. Is, wait, yo. We, put Ron White's we tequila just, on the thing to make sure the, the scale is no correct. Way, you don't weigh tequila. By yeah, it. it's on the bottle. All right. Let's see. What's going on here? Ron's going to tell us whether it's real or not. No, get the camera out of there. You might not want it on there. Let's see what it be. It's pretty fucking close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I, God. I'd say it's off about eight. Something like that, eight, something like that. This is, I realized immediately that him, him trying to rationalize how the scale is wrong is my new favorite comedy show. Uh, I, think, I think that this is a, a whole Shit. new spinoff idea from oh Kill Tony God. where I have people weigh in, go on a diet, and then a month later <laughs> make them weigh more. <laughs> Almost 30 pounds Dude, more. Like, I swear to God, I am so thirsty right now. <laughs> Fuck you, Tony, <laughs> you motherfucker. Thank, hey, thanks for helping. Thanks for helping me get healthy, you piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck you, Tony. Fuck you. Jesus Christ. There is no way. Dude. This is the first ever weight loss challenge in the history of Kill Tony. We are going to see what happens here. Either way, whatever is happening with that scale, obviously Trey's about to get on the same scale. How about you hand the microphone over to Trey? We're going to meet Trey Pack right now, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Now, Trey Pack, believe it or not, weighed in the first time at 396 pounds on the same scale, the same day that Sam Hunter's excuse-making ass weighed in. Trey, tell us about your uh, plan on losing weight over the past month and how that's gone for you. You still, what's scary is that your opponent gained 30 pounds, but you don't look confident oh, at no, all. I... <laughs> I'm almost certain this scale's <laughs> fucked. I don't know, man. This is... I don't trust it. No, I, it, I've just been starving. I feel uh, I feel a lot better. I feel great, so... You feel good? Yeah, what? the number on the scale doesn't matter. I'm not even going to look. I don't even want to you what, You're not going to be able to see it from your angle anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that if you look at the number on that scale, you're rolling into the audience. <laughs> kind of Mari. Uh, Hell yeah. Oh, God. This is so much funnier than I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm literally like, oh, God, we have to weigh these guys in. It's going to put a real dent in the show. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the blood has gone to my head from laughing this whole time. Now, do you want to take any articles of clothing off before you get on the scale? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed. I don't know if you noticed, but Sam Hunter took off his shirt and gained 25 pounds. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Woo! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This guy's got a real fucking chest tattoo. Holy yeah. shit, look no, at that. Oh no, yeah. Wow. 11, 18, 12. What is that? <laughs> is that uh, fucking, uh, is that how many uh, sandwiches you eat today? <laughs> Did I say Whataburger? Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it last time I was on the show. I used to be a youth minister. Uh, that was the, uh, was the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Uh, uh, <laughs> gross. Wow. Yeah. wow. Holy shit. What are you, from the Church of Fatter Day Saints? <laughs> yeah. All right. It's time to weigh in. Trey Pack, again, he was 396. Can I get some drum roll or something for this? Trey Pack, 396. Yoni, what do we got over there? It's 375. Whoa! <laughs> wow. 375. Absolutely incredible. That's Wait, two hundred and ten dollars? That's not gonna break the bank. <laughs> and, and he has to pay him, right? Yeah, actually, that we'll is figure true. It out. We'll figure it out. We literally we'll, said at the okay. last one. Now, Tony, we, as a joke, we literally said that if anybody gains weight, they have to pay the other person ten bucks. I, I, there has to be something wrong. Sam, weigh Tony, in one yeah, more time. Yeah, one more time. Let's yeah. weigh Sam in. This is absolutely. <laughs> what do we got there? That's a tie. 
Oh, it, it just told the time, everybody. That's how, that's how fat he is. Is it's like, <laughs> it's like it's bedtime. Time of for death me. for this scale. <laughs> I wasn't built for this. Stop it. This is fucking. This is how. This, this scale might as well have been at Astro World this weekend for how many times. Tab it and then step. How much pressure yeah. it's had on Tab it. Tab and then let it go and then step on it. There it is. He's taking off his shoes, everybody. Wait a second. It appears to be fluctuating at about 253. Oh, 353. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, dude. That's not good. <laughs> Still looking. I keep looking at your original way in here. Three thirty-five. Grab a microphone. Tell us. Explain to us what the fuck you think Yo, is going on. You here. gotta look at the before and afters, bro. There's you no are way. a fucking liar. I'm not. Dude. Yo, yo. You mean before and fafters? <laughs> Come on. No, my friend. My friend who I started with in Connecticut. He had shows down here. Uh-huh. We went to the gym back to back days the uh-huh. whole time. He's giving me advice like do this, do that, uh-huh. and I had to be like, dude, I like. I know what I'm doing, chill. And I push back. So you went to the gym two days? No. I went to the gym like five days a week for the month. Yeah. And then, and then like by the end of the two days, my boy kept telling me like, do this, try that. And I had to be like, dude, shut up. Like, relax. Then he called me a cunt in the gym. They like, made a scene. And then when we got back to my apartment, he was so dehydrated, he was having like uncontrollable muscle spasms. Oh, shit. Like he couldn't keep up with me in the gym and I came 20 pounds. There's no way. Let me ask you this. Have you had a lot of bread and it's pasta muscle. the past few days? I have not had a lot. Of, no, I haven't had any bread or pasta for at least the month. He just built his muscle up, and that, that weighs more. For real, that's what happened. Guys, that is not how it works. Stop clapping. Oh, my God. This is Thanks, why Ryan. they were able to fucking plow that vaccine into everybody's mind. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's how quickly it spreads. Oh, he just who suddenly gained muscle. No, you fucks. And then you all clap like you're supporting him. That's very nice. I want you you to lose 20 pounds in tears tonight after you get home. That's what I want. That's not nice. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm just, obviously, I'm joking. I feel really bad for you. It's completely embarrassing what happened up here tonight. (laughs) Uh, All right, well, I don't know. Uh, So you win $210, uh, Trey Pack. Congratulations to you. Wait, wait. Tony. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Don't you think we should extend this for uh, another month? You guys want to go one more month? Why are you saying no? Because this past month's been a nightmare. But, it, but, it, but look what you're doing. You're, 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 you're making yourself better. Don't you want to keep losing weight? Yeah. All right. Four Let's weeks from today. The saga will continue. We will weigh these men in again. Sam Hunter, we'll see if he brings 22 pounds of excuses with him. <laughs> Congratulations to Trey Pack, who's uh, lost 21 you, pounds in four weeks. Wait a second, is that a fucking bag of Swedish fish? What the fuck? And a pack of Bro, fucking camels. I'm, I'm gonna like pass out, I swear to God. I need Swedish to- fish? Fuck yeah. That's what you meant when you were you said you were eating nothing no. but fish and vegetables? This is after... <laughs> Swedish fish? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> this guy. What the fuck? How is- dare you bring a bag of Swedish fish? This is what, like, after weigh-ins, he's like, I just gotta... <laughs> and a pack of cigarettes. Oh my, yeah, those, those smokes Marlboro heavies. How about a hand for these guys, huh? I mean, I don't know. We're just trying to trying to improve people's lives here. It's not always easy. Back to the bucket we go. God damn, that was fucking hilarious. Oh my god. We literally joked about them gaining weight. Oh, unbelievable. Sometimes real life, you just can't beat it. Your next comedian, John Papau Anau. Papau Anau. Papu. Papapanu. Uh. Oh, ew. John. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. John Papanu. 
Um, hey, I had a rough childhood because uh, my parents are what we can call helicopter parents. You know, in the sense that helicopters are incapable of love. <laughs> I scared myself this morning by pooping red. Uh, but then I remembered that I ate beets last night. And I'm like super allergic to beets, so it was just blood. <laughs> uh, did you know that the Golden Gate Bridge was built with Depression era, era relief funds and continues to be used for depression relief to this day? <laughs> I would think the worst part about having to marry your own dog uh, would be having to have sex in only one style. <laughs> Non-consensual. Absolutely hilarious. John Papawanu. Papawanu? How do you say that? Papanu? Uh, Papa Iwanu. Papa Ioannou. Just Very cool. You have like the last name of a, like a big NBA player or something like that. No, I'm actually, I'm Polynesian. Oh, okay. What are they known for? The sauce, right? Can I get oh, away yeah, with that? Oh, yeah, the Wendy's sauce that Red Band loves so much. Can I get away with that? The saying Polynesian? I'm Greek. What? I'm Greek, actually. Oh, you're Greek. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. How's it going? <laughs> I love it. John, uh, this is your first time on the show? You seem Are familiar to me. I'm familiar because uh, we met on my first day in Austin. Okay. Fourth of July. Okay. Fourth at, uh, of July. CM Smokehouse. CM Smokehouse. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm, I go back with William. You go back with Montgomery. What? William. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you're friends with William. I to, love that. Uh, you originally from Memphis? No, I'm from Long Island. Okay. How do you and William know each other? <laughs> uh, we met at uh, this uh, La Quinta Inn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I fell right into that fucking trap. I love it. John, what do you do for a living? Um, I was a physicist, and uh, now I'm a data scientist slash machine learning engineer uh, slash unemployed. <laughs> wow. How come you're not a physicist anymore? What happened to that? Um, I went into grad school thinking I wanted to do research like be a professor and all that. And I got disillusioned with it during, the, during my grad school. So I started doing open mics in uh, Colorado. And um, I got my PhD, but I left. And I went to data science where you get paid better and you do um, less interesting work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's the vibe that we're getting. Is that a bummer? Getting. I'm a bummer, I'm sorry. Yeah. You brought Why do we have to talk about real shit? Can we talk about like my parents like beating the shit out of me? Sure, <laughs> let's do it. Absolutely. I was just gonna say interesting things about your life. Your parents beat the shit out of you. You don't. No, see? they're uh, they're great. I, right. I love. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't think most physicists come from an abusive background. <laughs> right. It's not really the old. Uh, yeah. I, well. So uh, they they were good. They're good parents. Yeah, they're good parents. Okay, they're back. Um, they're well, like. They're over. They're too good. Uh, no, it's bad. They're they're coercive. They're like, they're overbearing. Mm -hmm. So like, they're still worried about me because I am between jobs and unemployed. And I was like, I'm going. How old are you? I'm 35. 35, and they're worried about you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? I mean, you still look like a physicist. I, I figured, yeah. At least you didn't use your look, lose your look. Jesus, what do you do for fun, John? I train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Really? Holy nice. shit, damn. Yeah. I was just about to call you a fucking nerd, but now I'm not. Yeah, me and Lex Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. How far are you in your Jiu-Jitsu training? Uh, I'm a black belt. Get the fuck out of here. Really? Fuck yeah. Oh, my God. I've been training 15 years. Wow. Uh, I've also I trained with Joe Rogan. Wow. In 2009, when he briefly lived in Boulder, Colorado. Damn. I was a blue belt. He was a brown belt. He passed my guard. Then he choked me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm looking you... for revenge. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm calling it's out. It's entirely possible. I'm doing a show tomorrow. I can sneak in can the back talk? door. Yeah. You guys can have it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you go to this steam room together. I'm unemployed. I'll do that. Yeah, teach him a fucking lesson, man. Teach him a lesson. <laughs> 
I love it. Joe, what do you think about this idea of uh, of um, this guy getting his uh, this guy getting his revenge on you uh, in a jujitsu match? That's nonsense. Oh, there you go. That's what Joe seems to think about it. Doesn't think you have a fucking chance. <laughs> Has the training from being up there helped you? Because you were in Denver training jujitsu, and now you're in Austin, and uh, you know. Great yeah. question. Let me ask the you. The sea level, you know. Let yeah, me, it let me, helps let me, you because you can go to like an Apple store and get weed. Oh, that's the nice part. Of I must warn you, after you bragged about uh, being a black belt in jiu-jitsu, there's you probably going to be there's probably going to be a uh, a man named Cousin Berto who asks you to choke him later. So just be aware of that. He's out there. And no, I didn't mean you bragged about it. I totally asked you. I like how defensive you are of your uh, entrapment, man. I love that. Wow, yeah. um, John, what's your love life like? Uh, I have a girlfriend. Ooh, la la. How long you been with her? Quite a while, four four years. Okay. Listen, don't lie to me. <laughs> All right, Joe. She you lives can, in Canada. You can go back. You can go back to the gym, Joe. Um, I love it. Uh, so where'd you guys meet? Some fucking uh, trivia night or something like that. Comedy. Open mics? Yeah. Comedy. She does comedy too? She she did. Comedy. Wow. She doesn't do it anymore? Not really. Really? She could. She's, really? She's good. Is she with you here tonight? She's not going to come up. You don't think so? Is, are, is that so. you saying that? You guys want to see this guy's girlfriend do a minute? Bring her up. I, don't think she's I guarantee you she'll come do a minute of stand up. Bring her up. Introduce her. Introduce her. What's her name? Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she's already here now, but just say yeah. her name and then hand her the mic and then she's going to do a minute. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, have, you don't have a minute? Do you remember her name? I'm trying to buy time. You oh, okay. call me out on it. Okay. You don't have a minute? Do girl comedy. Okie dokie. Again, girl we comedy. still have no idea what her name is because John Papanu is so afraid of his girlfriend bombing up here, but here she it's is. Fine. What's, what's My your name? name? Is Elena. How about a hand for Elena, everybody? <laughs> Elena, we know okay. this is a tough position. I'm a girl, so do you guys do you guys like um, girl comedy? Yeah! Cool. Okay, so I was talking to my friend the other day, and she was telling me she likes to pick up guys at the gym, and I think that's so funny because I think you can tell like how a guy has sex by how he works out. You know, like you see a guy on a treadmill, and you're like, wow, he must have a lot of endurance, and then you see a guy doing squats, and you're like, wow, he could really throw his back into it, and then you see a guy on the bench press, like always skipping leg day, and you're like, that guy for sure comes blood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know this bitch knows what I'm talking about. She fucking knows. She's saying that. I want a pearl necklace and my rubies. I'm right, right? <laughs> Fix the bay gap. It's 20 whatever. Um, and also, okay. I didn't know it goes that long. Unbelievable. Elena. <laughs> Elena, stay up here for just a second. I can't believe your boyfriend didn't believe in you. Yeah. Whatever. He, he thought you didn't have a good minute in you. That's a very uncharitable interpretation of events. <laughs> <laughs> and what was up with you saying, and here's some broad comedy or some lady comedy? That seems it's really rude. It's girl comedy. You know yeah. how people like girl comedy? That was look great. Me up, look. That was do, good you stuff. Know, I got hair. And, you so know. you used to do stand-up more often, and now you don't? Yeah. Why, how, why'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it feels good when you do good, right? You feel. I guess. I mean, I don't know where I am. I'm just a piece of luggage being carried around. I love it. Hell yeah. So, okay. Just here, just doing it, I guess. Someone's been getting into her boyfriend's chemistry set. DMT who? <laughs> That's fun. I like your style, Elena. What do you do for work? I'm a software engineer. Oh, wow. Look at you guys. Yeah. I like you. Would you two meet at a lens crafters? I like that. I know! I know! I know! Okay? This is a match made I in know. heaven. I know! I know! I'm aware! Does he ever try any of the wacky jujitsu on you? You train as well? Um, I don't. And I 
I'm, I mean, I taught him how to shoot a gun, and now I have no advantage. So uh. I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm very afraid in kind of a fun way, but very afraid. Wow. So. I like it. So you knew how to shoot a gun before him? Oh, that's perfect. Yes, very yeah. good. It's like, it's and, mostly that. <laughs> so right? Obviously, you specialize in cartoon guns. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I got a new gig at a movie set dangerous. that I'm doing soon. The last guy got fired, so <laughs> they're just having me fill in. <laughs> what? Really excited, really big deal, big I opportunity. When you were doing comedy, how long did you do? Like, what was the longest set you did? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. I'm supposed to give you a real answer, right? Oh, like 15, you're, 10 minutes, yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah. Don't fucking talk for me, okay? <laughs> this is my moment. This is my moment. <laughs> oh my god. Girl, come We are watching girl, the comedy. end of a four year relationship right here. Only at Kill Tony, the greatest live podcast in the world. Absolutely incredible. You guys are adorable. I feel like you guys have sex like Willy Wonka's grandparents. Like, you guys, like. You guys sleep like opposite ways. Just have yeah, fucking. And another like eighty year old couple right with us. Just have nerd sex. Like like she bends over and starts reading a book while you just hit it from behind. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you like a calculator. <laughs> do you want to do five minutes Thursday? Sure. Whoa! In an unbelievable moment. You just saw a young man get pulled out of the bucket, did good, said his girlfriend used to do stand-up. She came up, did a minute, killed, and got a real comedy gig out of it here on Kill Tony. Elaine is going to be at the Secret Show on Thursday. Thank you. You guys take those. The big one's for her, the little one's for you, John. <laughs> What are you going to do, choke me? <laughs> wow. And they're friends with William. How cool is that? I know. I can't believe William hangs out with smart people. Well, I have to tell you, William, the molecular structure of that raisin bread is damaging to your future health. I love a good, good couple of dorks. This might be the last bucket pool of the night. Make some noise for iPower. This is a new name, iPower. We're going to see what happens here. Here is iPower. Check, check. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, you know what's worse than getting fired in real life? Getting fired on Zoom because you get to see your own live reaction and your life crumbling? Oh, man. Um, I feel like Hennessy is actually the price that it is, not because of the quality of the beverage, but uh, because of public safety. If you picture a bunch of college kids drinking that shit, man, oh, man. Um, so I flew here from Boston on Saturday, and uh, if, uh, like, I don't understand why airports are so strict, because, like, you can totally eat fish and chips at 10.30 in the morning, and that's legal, and bring it on a plane. Stink out the whole cabin, man. I don't get it. That's what I got. Thank you. Yeah, I like your style, iPower. I actually, you're not funny at all, but I like you, dude. Thanks, bro. You have great stage presence. Thanks, bro. You're fucking up here. You had the balls to sign up. You have fucking swagger. You have confidence. You're taking it like a man. Thank you, You should man. have seen the fucking teary-eyed fat boys I had up here fucking... <laughs> And they know how to oh do stand-up, too. Meanwhile, they're up here fucking <laughs> making excuses for their existence. Anyway, I'm kidding. I'm trying to make these boys healthy. I love it. Uh, eye power. Let's talk about it. How long have you been in the rap game? The rap game? Yeah. I actually threw a lot of rap shows back in the day, man, but uh, I never rap myself, nah. No, you don't know, you don't know how to rap? No, sir. Okay. What do you do exactly? What type of fucking... I sell commercial paint and renovation jobs, and I DJ. Oh, <laughs> DJing is the energy that I'm getting off of you. That's what it is. It's not a rapper. It's a DJ. That makes sense. How long have you been DJing for? Three years. Is that your DJ name, iPower? Yes, sir. Okay, what made you go with iPower? My last name's Power. Okay. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
That's, that's the vibe we're getting. DJ Power. Whoa! whoa. Uh, are you guys ready for the music? <laughs> DJ I Power. <laughs> is, is that what it sounds like at your shows? Are you guys ready? <laughs> Jesus, the hi-hat. Is that the snare too? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what your music sounds like? I play a lot of house music, some rap music. It depends oh, yeah. on the night, man. You look like you play apartment music, bro. <laughs> house music. Can you give us an example? Like, is there a popular song that comes on that everybody goes, that, that goes wild on? When the... I usually play shit that people don't know, man. Okay. I like Isaiah Rashad. He's a really dope rapper from Chattanooga. Oh, shit. All yeah. right. Well, a lot of people know the guy you just mentioned after you bragged about people not knowing the people that you play that... Let's get a drink after the show, You know, guys. I like to play uh, music a lot of people don't know about, like uh, Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, I power. are you from Boston? You live there? No, I'm from uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts, about an hour south. Okay, I know what's up with that. Is that near Swansea? Yo, the Venus de Milo, man. Yeah, that place man. is fucking, whew. Absolutely. They're still, they're still open, man. I love it. I love it. Fucking lobster tails the size of this goddamn table. We've yes, done sir. it. It's an unbelievable place. The home of Kill Tony East, where we would do a big run of a thousand plus. Audience. I heard they were. Uh, yeah, I heard they were closing though. They, they closed, they, but you can. They still change your eat mind there. Like yeah. we're 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 still gonna do shows there when they figure out their fucking <laughs> COVID shit up on the uh, yeah. Upper East Coast. These people are so scared. It's <laughs> creepy. They're old timey Paul Revere buildings. They're like, we can't go outside anymore. It's okay. We're gonna get vaccinated. <laughs> it's going to be figured out. We're just probably months away from everybody getting uh, their minds back. Um, uh, I power. So you, you live in Boston, though. You have to go back there. You just flew in here on Saturday. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And I got how long f- you in Austin for? I'm, I'm here till Thursday. I got some family in Dripping Springs, so I figured I'd say what's up. And then, uh, nice. honestly, man, your show got me through the pandemic. I broke my leg real bad, and it was the only thing I had to look forward to. Oh, so I appreciate that. you, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Damn, interesting. So you're going to Dripping Springs. What else about you, iPower? Give me something else. What else do you do for fun? You, you, you seem like a guy, other than DJing, like you know a magic trick or two. Am I right? No tricks on my sleeve, man. I like to disc golf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fly kites. Smoke a lot of weed, man. Shit, I go to music festivals, drink beer, golf. Oh, yeah. How'd you break the leg? Playing That's- basketball, man. I got hit midair. I've uh, been playing ball my whole life. I came down awkwardly. I Gordon Haywarded myself, so. Okay. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Broke a leg. God damn. Broke my uh, leg, but dude. Uh, that is. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, that's not gay sex. That is Tom Segura after breaking his leg. That is, it is literally Tom Segura on the ground after one more time. Let's hear it again. Uh, uh, uh. It's, it's just Tom. Again, you might be thinking, like, well, who's the other guy? Nope, it's just Tom. One more time. <laughs> it was worse than that, bro. Shit. Uh, yours was worse than that? Worse than that? Can you do an impression of what you sounded like when you broke your leg? Uh, fuck. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man. All right, well... I like your style, man. It was I, my first time, bro, so, you know, I did my best. Oh, no, yeah, uh, we know it was your first <laughs> time, iPower. You did 33 seconds of, uh, of, of, of good trying. But I like your st- Again, you know, dude, like I said, you have, uh, you know, an unbelievable amount of confidence. DJing has really, uh, you know, playing other people's music has really taken your <laughs> stage presence to a level that... You know, I, I used to throw shows too, man. So I know a lot of original guys, and then basically I got sick of splitting the pot. So I just kind of played other people's shows. Okay, okay, thank you. I love it. Thank you, bro. I power. Thanks for saying the nice things. I'm glad we were able to help you through the pandemic. Here, I power. Take one of these. Put that on your turntable and smoke it. Hell yeah, dude. You guys think we should go to this bucket one more time? I don't think we can end it like that. Lexi E. Lexi E is next on Kill Tony. See what happens here. We got movement. 
anybody moving? Hey. Yes. Okay. Lexi E is coming. Let's see what happens here. Here she comes, everyone. Make some noise one more time for Lexi E. So wore this shirt because it reminded me of a zebra on acid. <laughs> My best friend asked me the best question the other day. Lexi, what's wrong now? Are you okay? Girl, I have devil horn pimples growing out of my head, and Halloween's over. Yeah, I'm doing great. Feeling a fire. Oh. I'm really interested in ball sex. <laughs> Mainly because I've worked around animals, so you really can't help but stare at them because they're just hanging out there daily, dangling. When it's not ball sex, though, guess what? It's a bunch of peni. Plural for penis. <laughs> That's what I like to think. I understand why some rhinoceros species are going endangered because I'd be endangered too if I was dealing with something that big on the regular. <laughs> Thank you. Lexi E, everybody. Wow. Little did I know that going back to that, we, would, we were all wanting the DJ back up here. Uh, I mean, you know. Lexi, you are like so, so, I think you're literally too sweet to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah. You seem like literally too nice of a human being to have any power up here. I have a lot of power. Okay. It's a shame you don't have eye power because uh, turns out he had... <laughs> Every only time certain places. What? Hold the microphone up like this. Oh, eye power is needed in only certain Even places. Even more. Even more. I just, I feel bad. I like don't want to hurt D. Madness's ears, you know? Did you say eye power? <laughs> I heard the other girl. <laughs> you know that every time you say eye power, the noise happens? Except for that time right there. Because my producer's literally mentally retarded. <laughs> I'm not paying too much I attention said because I it is my first You said he time. can't see me, everybody. In, in a moment. He said after, her what she said. After I said he's retarded, he goes, I can't see you. It's, it would be the sound of the word eye power that you would need. No, but you, I didn't realize you've been reading my lips. Said, like, you said what she said. Yeah, but you signal. said what she I said. said eye power and you almost didn't do it again. <laughs> Stop. You said what she said. It. I thought that was the rules. I was waiting for her to say it. Unbelievable. Look at the I'm fucking impact that eye power left on the stage. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. People love it. Wow. Um, so how long have you not been doing stand-up comedy? No, no, that's what I was saying. It's my first time. Very first time. Okay. We gotta get I'm like the other gonna... guy on the bucket list. Why We're going to set you down the right path. I'm in here. Austin. I love it. So this is your first time ever. Where are you from? Orlando. Oh, okay. You got those Disney World energies. I see yeah, it. Yeah, because that's uh, where I saw all the ball sacks. What? You you have to project. That's where I saw all the ball sacks. Okay. Okay. God. Maybe They're you are beautiful. funny. Maybe when we hear what you can actually say, it might be good. Yeah, I'm not used to this mic. She's a dirty bitch. Everyone knows that, right? Whoa. <laughs> right, all right. Hell yeah. Okay. Lexi E, are you just visiting Austin? I am. I'm, I'm actually leaving Florida, so You're really just seeing where I end up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Life's an open road, baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Life is an open road. Oh, my goodness. You're just filled with fucking calendar bullshit, huh? <laughs> like daily calendar. <laughs> Life's an open road. Leave Florida. Um, Wow, what do you do for fun? What's like a wild thing about you that we'd be surprised to know about you other than uh, you call the police on black people at parks? <laughs> That's actually... Eye power! Actually... <laughs> all right, hold on, hold Honestly, on. Honestly, that actually offends me because that's not like me at all. <laughs> What's not like you? Uh, I love dancing. Um, just really? What kind? Of 
<laughs> wow, when you put your finger out like that, it made a weird sound. Did you hear that? Yeah, well, it's like xenon, you know? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, my God. It's happening. There's been people on acid. There's been people on Swedish fish. And now we have lithium and Zoloft joining the party, everybody. This is very, very exciting. Welcome to America, where everybody is on something. All right, Red Band, that's enough. What's going on? Why do you have it on your lap for the first time? I can time? see her! <laughs> okay. What do you like to dance to? You really actually dance? Honestly, I went to the Tame show last night like the other guy. And Hold on. Oh, red I found band. out I'm really into air drum. That's the new thing, I guess. You know how to air drum? No, you don't know how to do shit, no, do you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I bet you don't even vacuum. I bet you have one of those robot things that just go around your place. I prefer sweeping. What? I actually prefer traditional sweeping. Oh, okay. Yeah, great workout. All right. <laughs> Lexi, who told you uh, in your life that you're funny? In the history of your life. It could, this could be a teacher at school. It could be your... Mother, it could be. Somebody once told me to... I, I guess no one, but I just had. I make people laugh, so. Uh, that Where? Just makes me happy. Where are these people? <laughs> what do you do for a job? Did I ask you already? Well, I uh, worked at Disney. I was actually a safari guide. Holy shit! Are you serious? You nailed it in the head, baby. Oh my god. Welcome to Disney, the happiest place in the world. Oh! Are you no, guys I'm ready? No, I'm sorry. To... I, I guess I should keep the mic. More How many of you love Mickey Mouse? Mouse? What does that mean to work at Disney's, though? Yeah, what exactly well, did you do? Before it means no all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Red Band, you are wild right now. <laughs> what does it mean to work at Disney? Well, unbelievable. What exactly did you do at Disney? I uh, did the safari ride. Really? Yeah. Can you give us an example of what you would say on the safari? You don't need I'd that. be like, twin day, which is Swahili for let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lexi. But I can't. I got to tell you, I, I, would, uh, I would try to give you advice, but I told you to hold the mic closer to your mouth, and, and you never fucking it. did it. No, I'm you sorry, didn't either. You didn't either. Ron, I'm sorry. Anyway. You're right here, and it's just... Yeah, My just, mind is blown. I don't know. I'm just saying, you don't take direction very fucking well. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it took me 11 years to graduate, so, yeah. I don't it really know. did? Uh, just, yeah, I just graduated. Oh, my God. Are you like high, a... Or not high school. Uh, college, obviously. Wow. 11 years? I mean, no. I just love learning. Oh, oh wow. my God! Well, you could just put your hand around in the back of your head and push it towards the microphone. It's it's. All this right, isn't our Red class. Band, stop okay. it, Red Band! Come on. It's not our class. All right. Well, I mean, Lexi, I don't know what the fuck to do with you, dude. I know. How long are you in here. Austin for? I'm just, I don't know, till the. Oh, that's right. that's right. You're like on like an adventure. You're like just this Gabby Petito energies out here. <laughs> I'm leaving Florida. I don't know where I'll end up exactly. Perhaps yeah. in a swamp. <laughs> Everyone's so worried, but... Lexi, I have got to get you off this stage. There she goes. Lexi E, everybody. We're going to keep it moving. Congratulations. Her first time ever doing stand-up. Make some noise for Lexi, everybody. Lexi, take one of these back with you. There you go. Absolutely. Lexi E, everyone. All right, there's only one way to end a show like this, and that's with a guaranteed fucking knockout punch. This young man has been a regular on the show, writing and performing a brand new minute every single week, longer than anyone in the entire history of the show. He now spends his evenings opening for the likes of Joe Rogan and a lot of the best comedians in the world. He's about to debut another brand new minute for you guys right now. This is the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. There he is. Live in the flesh. After a very successful weekend at Skankfest, he has arrived back home to Austin, Texas. This is William Montgomery. 
Hello, my name is William Montgomery, and my pronouns are those and under. Does anybody know if milky discharge from your penis is a coronavirus symptom? ESPN is desperate for content. Last night I watched this show, The Very Best of the Houston Astros. It lasted a minute and a half. I'm gender fluid. When it's time to cook dinner, I identify as male. When it's time to mow the lawn, I identify as female. And then this final uh, joke, I said it during one of the skank fests, but it's a rare true story joke for me. Uh, was talking with my father Larry earlier and told him I ate some Indian food last night and he responded, what, like deer meat? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, Papa? Deer meat? I'm not talking about fucking Native American food. I've never even heard of that. But deer meat, I'm sure, I mean, that sounds like Native American food, but it just shocked me. <laughs> William Montgomery, everybody, I do believe. Wow. One of my favorite jokes ever, maybe, Tony. Yeah, definitely. Favorite joke of, uh, that I've heard in a while. That gender fluid is absolutely hilarious, William. You've done it again. You've uh, shown everybody exactly how it's done. I am sure that uh, the people that have been called out of here have, are in the back taking notes. Lexi E. Has, is probably back there taking notes. Um, you know who else is probably back there taking notes? Is I Power, everybody. Uh, blatantly the thing that... I Power, everyone. It would have been a great moment, but there you go. There, there it is. There it is, right on cue. Where is iPower? I'm, uh, I'm a little worried about him. Yeah, okay. Did you see his performance here tonight, William? I did not. Okay, all good. Did you have fun at Skankfest? I did. I actually uh, ended up making a ton of money there, and I got a little, uh, little cosmetic thing done with me. I got some new nails while what I was the there. What the f- Whoa! <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What the fuck are those, dude? Yeah, it cost me 500 fucking dollars. Are you serious? Holy shit. It cost me 500 fucking bucks. Now I can't fucking pee. I can't unzip my zipper. I can't open up a bag of salad. I can't even open up the fridge. I can't even get to the bag of salad. I can't even open up the fucking fridge. It was such a horrible mistake to get these implanted onto my fingers. One it was $500. That is a great excuse to not eat Fucking salad. $500 I spent on this shit. I can't ring the fucking doorbell. <laughs> can't open up a fucking Butterfinger. What made you do that? Why would you spend 500 hard-earned dollars on what appears to be press-on nails? I don't know. I was thinking a cosmetic change that I would like to make with, it and, uh, with myself. I have always been self-conscious about my fingernails. So I thought spending $500 on some new nails would be a good idea, and it's turned out that it's not. I can't climb in fucking trees anymore. Tony, uh, the last kill, Tony. A lot of people don't know this yet, but a lot of people well, called out his nails. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's going to be in chronological order either. I think it's just going to be that. It's going to look like that's going to be the callback to this. I think the way that this is probably going to go. I don't know. Yeah, I do. You really just fucked that one up, Red Band. I feel like this was <laughs> going pretty good. Then you mentioned that shit. Why'd you do that? Well, because at the festival, everyone started making fun of your nails. Like, throughout the whole festival, people were, like, pointing at his nails because he had really weird Coke nails. And no, I don't. A little bit of something. No, I don't. A little bit of something. Why'd you have to bring that up, right, man? I thought you fucking said you weren't going to bring that shit up. <laughs> you know I'm <laughs> self-conscious about my fucking nails, Red Band. For those of you that don't know, Red Band, or, uh, William uh, stopped drinking about four months ago and became addicted to raisin bread. Uh, William, 
every week we ask. I you, can't get enough of it. How much raisin bread? Give these. I people, can't get enough of it. Give these people an example, uh, William. Uh, uh, how much raisin bread have you had since the last episode on Monday? Last Monday in one week, how many lobes do you think you've had? Since Saturday, I've had three. Since Saturday? Yep. That's, that's more than. I a can't loaf get a enough day. of it. It started shit trying to put the fucking butter on it with these goddamn dumbass nails I bought for 500 fucking dollars. I don't have 500 bucks at the moment. I had to go to a fucking loan place. William, I don't think I've ever asked you this. What's your favorite thing about raisin bread? Why do you love it so much? What part of the raisin bread is it that you love? Why raisin bread? Man, what a hard question. Whoa. (laughs) I've never really thought about it. I I think you're going to probably nail the answer. So... uh... Um, Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Michael's the only one that caught that one. I like it. Oh, my fingernails. It's good when. It's always good when only the that drummer That went over laughs. my head as well. I didn't understand. Sometimes it's good to only make the drummer laugh. You know, they work hard back there. <laughs> look at those fucking shiny, big ass nails. I'm telling you, they look like $600 nails, bro. Do they really? Yeah, they really do. It's beautiful. Cool. It's really beautiful. Wise investment. How long are those? Yeah, I thought 500 fucking... What do you mean wise investment? I think it's a good... I said that. I said wise investment. Uh, how long do you think those are going to uh, last for? He really uh, doesn't like No, you. he's so catty. <laughs> and like with those nails, he's extra catty. He's like, who said that? Like, like... God, oh shut God. up, Redman. Shut up, Redman. No. <laughs> shut up, dude. Why don't you go eat some raisin bread, bitch? Okay, Whoa. bitch. Okay, bitch, I might. For those of you that don't know, <laughs> Red Man is bitch. addicted to regular bread, so this is quite a re- real <laughs> Yeah, rivalry. less calories. What do you mean it's less fucking calories? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? True. Raisins have calories, bitch. Okay, okay bitch. Okay, okay Red Man. Thank you so much. Okay, you bitch. <laughs> You're riling William up. God, everybody everybody likes bitch. a happy William. So well, well, I have been... R- Real happy lately about these fingernails. I really do think it was a wise uh, choice for me. I regret nothing. Did they say how long they're going to last for? Uh, Two years. Wow. Damn, that's deep, dude. All of a sudden, 500 doesn't seem like that much. (laughs) Yeah, not at all. Yeah, it's like 10 bucks a month. (laughs) I don't know. I didn't. Really I didn't think about it. Like that. <laughs> I didn't really do the math on that at all. So, don't hold that one against me. Uh, might be twenty. I don't know. I still can't even remember what we were talking about. So, wow, two years. And then, what do you think you're gonna do it again? I don't know. Who's fucking uh, planning a pipe bomb up there? Yeah. What the fuck was that? This place is chaos. Austin knows how to party, man. Sold out shows every single week here in Austin, Texas. Since we got here. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw my new Vulcan Gas Company jumpsuit, by the way. But, uh, this hey, is that real... looks familiar. Can we see the back of it, Tony? Yeah, it's, uh... I mean, it's, it looks like it says something else with a bunch of patches all over it. Yeah, no, it's the real deal. That's a real Vulcan Gas Company fucking uh, <laughs> jumpsuit right there. <laughs> Uh, William, you're just unbelievable. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we end this thing? So, uh, I don't know how weird this is going to be specifically to you, Red Band. I don't know. It shouldn't be. I don't think it is going to be, but I I am... I think it is going to be, actually. I'm just reading your energies. I have no (laughs) idea what you're going to say, but it seems like it's going to be super fucking weird. I have uh, started doing a podcast. We filmed four or five episodes. We're going to try to release it the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Oh, that's great. Okay. Where where will people be able to find it? What's it called? What are you doing with it? Where's it at? It's a website called theswamps.com. It uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't know. What, okay, that's well, when you stupid. plug things, that's when the joke would stop for just a moment. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? The thing. The that William you're... Montgomery Show. Oh wow, that sounds great. Everybody loves William. So keep an eye out for that. 
Of course. You have, a, uh, you have an amazing legion of fans that have uh, found you. Um, even D-Madness is going to keep his eyes Thank open. Thank you so much. I'm sure you're going to do really good, man. I'm sure you're going to do really good. It, it's great that D-Madness uh, is, is... Nobody has eye power like D-Madness. <laughs> I power. It's actually, I guess you guys don't know, it's spelled E-Y-E. That's why it's... <laughs> All right. William, we Cool, I feel like I could have plugged the, my new podcast in a much better way. I feel like that was a horrible downer. It was good. The William Montgomery Show, coming soon. Everywhere uh, podcasts are available. There's William Montgomery, everybody. Austin, Texas. How loud can this room get right now for the great Ron White, everybody? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you so much. I love you, Tony. I love you, Tony. Look at this amazing drawing from the great Ryan J. E. Belt all the way back in L.A. He just drew that while the episode was happening. He draws every episode of Kill Tony. All those prints are available at ryanjebelt.com. Super fucking cool painting on this one. And guys, how about one more time for the Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey Kill Tony Band, everyone. Michael Gonzalez, Matt Muling, and Deep Madness. Follow them on social media. They're performing always live shows here in Austin. And uh, Yellow Rose, Red Rose, uh, Blue Norther, Vodka Seltzer, CM Smokehouse, Bones Eye for the Joke Books. Austin, we love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's check out the art by Chris Rogers real quick. Chris, come up here and show everybody what you drew. Local artist Chris Rogers art also drew what I believe has to be a picture of the great Hans Kim, everyone. Famously, with kisses all over his head. Chris Rogers art. After party starts in just a bit, guys. Stick around. Grab another drink. Unlock your phones if you want to. Hang out. Or you can do whatever you want. We love you. Good night again. Good night. Good night.